Hi, welcome to Phil Explorer. Thank you for joining us. First of all, I want to make sure everyone's staying safe and uh, that you're doing great. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for the comments and I really appreciate it. Today, we, we have a very special activity for all of you. It's our first live and uh, I, I, I joined with two more partners. They've been following me and supporting me since the beginning. So I wanted to make a um, special something for you. We'll have our first trilogy talk. Um, and we'll be discussing our favorite trilogies, why we like them, um, what do we like, what makes it special. Maybe maybe even split it into categories, our classic, our normal. And um, so yeah, I'm waiting them for you to join. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Um, each one of us selected um, a few of our trilogies. They will be joining soon. Hi. What's going on, man? What's up? Good to see you. Yeah, everything's good, man. How you doing? Appreciate it. Everything is good over here. Um, soon we will have uh, all in bad uh, movie titles to join us. So I'll be kind of switching between you guys. That's okay with you. Yeah, let me put some headphones on because I can barely hear. It's completely fine. Okay. Appreciate you having here. Welcome, welcome. Appreciate yeah, of course. You my request. Yeah, definitely, man. Thank you for having me. Switching now to um, Elliot from Movie Files, so he can um, say hi to to our viewers. Yo, what's up, man? What's up, man? Appreciate you having here. Welcome, welcome. Appreciate. Yeah, you. man. No problem. So we'll be doing this kind of dynamic, you know, um, switching between you and uh, Flickstock. So yeah. um, that's okay. So yeah, of course, yeah. for all our viewers, um, we we talked for the past, uh, we've been planning this around two weeks now. And it's our trilogy talk. We'll be going over our favorite trilogies, why we like them, um, something special, um, why are their favorites, maybe even split in two in the classic trilogies. And in the most common one, most recent ones. So let's go ahead. Elliot, you're my guest. You're first. Yeah. Um, well, I guess. Uh, so so I guess my list consists of like movies that are not necessarily like the, the maybe the best movies or the best trilogy ever. Of course, there's the Star Wars of the world and Back to the Future and all that stuff. But I'll start off with one uh, that I grew up with. And that's Toy Story, man. Uh, Toy Story 1, 2, and 3. Of course, we know it has a fourth one that recently came out last year, which yeah. I really enjoyed. But, yeah, man, the, the you know, Buzz, Woody, and, and the crew, man, I grew up with those with those toys, man, those characters, and they always uh, stay near and dear to my heart, you know. And in regards to just movies in general, you know, I think it's one of the few movies where I think the sequel is better than the original. Uh, and some people might say the third one is the best one of the trilogy. So it's one of those one franchises where they just – Tend to, in my opinion, they got better and better and better. Uh, but my favorite out of the three is definitely Toy Story 2. But uh, that's my first uh, trilogy that I wanted to bring up is, uh, is Toy Story. Oh, no, definitely. near dear to my heart. Along the movies, you see the evolution of the animation in the movies. Mm -hmm. It's very really amazing. And especially the third one, for me, was the perfect ending back then. Where yeah. they just stared when Woody just, uh, when Andy just leaves at the end. For oh, me, yeah. That was a pretty good ending, so... Yeah, great choice, yeah. man. Pre definitely have it on my list here. Okay. <clears throat> Gonna go and join Flickstock to see what he has to say about it. Let's check out his list. <clears throat> All right. All right, I'm here. here. All right, right. My man, you're my guest. Go ahead. Yeah. So I heard Elliot talk about Toy Story, and uh, that was excellent because um, it was hard 
especially since we just got that fourth one, uh, which I really did enjoy too. But did we need a fourth one? Not really, but it's always fun, right? I mean, to go back to that cast. And I thought the fourth one left off on a note that made me a little little sad because, you know, I'm not going to spoil it, but, um, you know, one of the characters kind of branching off and doing his own journey and whatnot. And, and, uh, but that's what it's about. It's about growth. It's about the story changing and stuff like that. But as far as me, I wrote a lot of them down and what Elliot said, uh, some of them might not be the best, like the third one or whatever it is. It's always the first couple that are, that are better. But, um, for the horror fans, I'm going to say evil dead. So you get evil dead, evil dead two, and then army of darkness. So, uh, and recently we just got news that they're going to be doing another one called Evil Dead Now. I so, haven't heard it, about that, but that's a pretty interesting choice. Uh, we have any horror fans out there? there you have yeah. It? Yeah. So I'm a huge horror fan. I, I, I grew up on all of that. So um, Evil Dead, uh, if you guys aren't, aren't familiar with it, it, it stars Bruce Campbell as Ash. And uh, he's going to be part of this, this fourth one as well. Uh, they did a reboot, I think, in 2002. I, maybe like about five or six years ago and uh that one was really good as well they switched up the roles a bit but it was really really gory so if i mean if you guys are into the practical gore effects the third one army of darkness was extremely funny and silly but um you know it, it stayed true and i thought if you're a horror fan you're going to enjoy that as a solid series the character of ash is just really cool and badass so yeah sure. people did yes, sir very 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 nice, very nice. Unlike, um, I also read when we were planning this, it would yeah. be a very great advantage for Instagram to uh, finally do the update where they split the screen for we to have more than one guest on these lives. It oh, would yeah. Be, like, super good. Oh, yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> Switching to yeah. Elliot. All right, so I saw David, uh, Evil Dead. That's a pretty good call. It's a pretty good call. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm actually one of the rare ones that actually likes the, the reboot, the 2013 reboot, more than I do the original. But I like that pick, David, for the horror fans out there. So I guess before I go for my next pick, are we doing just our two top franchises? Or how many are we going to do on this list? You're my guest. You do whatever you want. Man. All right, cool, cool, like cool. Same, man. Cool, man. Well, I, uh, I guess my next one, uh, just kind of looking at my list, I got like one, two, three, four, five. I got like seven of them. But I'll go with my next one here, and that's the uh, – the uh, Christopher Nolan Batman, man, uh, you know, with Batman Begins, Dark Knight, and I'm one of the few that actually really, really, really enjoys The Dark Knight Rises. I thought Bane was a really incredible villain, even with his mask and all that stuff, man. I really enjoyed the, the story that we got with Bruce Wayne and seeing, you know, him from Batman Begins all the way to Dark Knight Rises and obviously... Um, you know, yeah, uh, Robin, the call to Robin at the end of that film. But obviously, like I said, when it comes to when I talked about Toy Story, The Dark Knight is one of the best, you know, second parts of a trilogy that I've ever seen. And uh, just a big fan. And like I had mentioned with Toy Story, it seemed like all the movies uh, got better with time. But also, like I said, when you look at just the story that Chris Nolan was kind of telling with the beginnings of Batman and not, you know, having a, a scarecrow as a villain and Ra's al Ghul coming into the mix and obviously the Joker with the with the sequel and, and Harvey Dent with Two-Face. And like I said, finishing up with Bane, I just think it's he did such a great job of making it grounded. And if it wasn't for Christopher Nolan, a lot of these films, you know, kind of taking that more serious approach, who knows where the superhero comic book realm would be in regards to just how he approached the, the genre. So always a big fan of what Christopher Nolan did. I'm excited to see what hopefully Matt Reeves get his trilogy and maybe we can one day, 10 years from now, compare Nolan's trilogy versus Reeves' trilogy and uh, see what we got there. But I, I have to mention uh, the Dark Knight trilogy oh, that we definitely. got with Christopher Nolan. Nolan, he, it's arguably one of the best uh, directors of all time. It's right there on the very top. Yeah, yeah, man. Heath Ledger's um, role in The Dark Knight was like... Ooh. It broke ground, yeah. I mean, the only actor to get nominated, you know, for like that you know, supporting role, and not only nominated, but win uh, for yeah. his best supporting actor. So it, 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 it broke a lot of ground with uh, with that trilogy and, and everything. To, to see um, yeah. how 
that Nolan had like a clear vision from the beginning because yeah. Warner Brothers asked him to make a fourth film and he said, let's not make it. Yeah. I only wanted the trilogy. And a different take on Bane that we, we were used to take. To yeah. Get. That yeah, was man. definitely like super mind blowing. That shit was, man. That's Great choice. Was. Appreciate you. Switching again. We're done. back. All right, man. So yeah, Christopher Nolan. Uh, I I agree. Got to give him praise on that one. That was a good. That was a good pick, uh, Elliot. Um, so for mine, and it's probably by default. I'm sure Elliot has it on his list. It's the John Wick trilogy, and I know everybody's gonna gonna go to that automatically. Uh, even though there was some things I I kind of didn't like uh, about the third one, but I loved about the third one because it kind of almost introduced this whole ballerina, the backstory about where John Wick came from, right? Um, but it was one of those where I kind of didn't like the way it left off. I, 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 th I thought it could have just been three and that was it, you know, but instead we're getting more. So, and that's fine. I mean, he's, he's kicking ass as well, those, all those long shots of all the fight scenes and stuff. And he's 55 years old, uh, Keanu Reeves, doing this, right? So we're getting to see a lot of these older actors um, – just becoming these action stars, I mean, whether that, you know, uh, we just got uh, news, too, I don't know if you heard about uh, Jessica Alba, like, signing a Netflix deal to be, like, an action star, too. So these are older actresses. You got Charlie Theron doing Atomic Blonde and, you know, all these action stars a little later in life. But John Wick 1 set it off to, to, you know, not only that whole dog scene and stuff of how brutal he can become with vengeance and stuff, you know, and then you get John Wick 2 where, Every all these you know assassins were after him, and then the same in the third one where the bounty is just upped a little more and a little more backstory. I think that was probably a, a, a extremely solid trilogy that we got so far, and we don't really need to see more. I mean, we could do spinoff movies and stuff, but hey, if they keep coming, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep watching them. You know, I love <laughs> I love the John Wick movies. Definitely, after after this whole worldwide situation, I'm mm -hmm. eager to get, get back to theaters. Maybe some. John Wick is practically one of the few action series right now that we have that have evolved over, over time. And yeah. for me, the way I see the film, like, John Wick 1 was the first, like, introduction to that um, mm -hmm. Assassin's Universe. And uh, we get a little bit of the backstory while he's back. Then on the yeah. second one, it was the, the best world building for me. We get the continental aspect. We see a little bit yeah. of that world. Um, the third one for me was more action than anything else, so that's how mm -hmm. I see that trilogy. Definitely, you can argue which one is the best one. Everyone, it's allowed to for disagreement. Yeah, but the point is, those, all those movies are really good. Like they're all even standalone. Just if you watch them by themselves, they're all really good movies. Yeah. Great choice. I have it on my list also. So let's see awesome. what Elio has to say about it. Yeah, I put in I put in the clown mixer. That was literally literally my next pick on my list with the John Wick franchise. I'm a big fan of uh Mr. Wick and excited to see what they do with the fourth one. But I guess to kind of keep the theme of assassins rolling, I'll uh mention the Jason Bourne uh uh trilogy. Uh, um I think you know, Born Identity, Born Supremacy, and Ultimatum. I think that they are fantastic movies. Um, you know, Matt Damon kicking ass. And I can't think of the uh, Greengrass or I can't think of the director's name, but I thought that they had such great uh, synergy and such a great uh, symbiotic relationship in the director and in the action uh, star and Matt Damon. And those films are incredible. I mean, before we got in, you know, Fast and Furious, uh, car races and all that stuff, I think that Born uh, Identity had one of the best car sequences in an action movie. The hand-to-hand -hand combat, I can't remember if it was the second one or the third one, but there's a scene where you have uh, Jason Bourne fighting one of the assassins in a bathroom, cor close quarters, just the hand-to-hand -hand combat is so great. Uh, I really, really love the Jason Bourne franchise, and obviously we know we got the spinoff with Jeremy Renner, and then, you know, the Jason Bourne, the, the fifth one, didn't like that one too much, but those first three are like yeah. excellent spy films and excellent action films and i'll always uh remember those films no definitely i remember back back that I, I was a little kid 
Um, mm-hmm. I remember uh, growing up seeing those style films. I remember that I was like intrigued on seeing that mystery, like his identity, all yeah. that stuff. And I feel yeah, like man. that, that like you said, the first three, that was like really stick to the story, but like eventually, it, like you were off. I don't know, like yeah, yeah. Poor Jeremy Renner, man. They always try to throw him into the, try to be the movie star, you know, whether it be that franchise, Mission Impossible franchise, or even you know Hawkeye, you know. So Jeremy Renner always kind of gets the short end of the stick, but yeah, it is what it is. Talking about Mission Impossible, Jeremy Renner was supposed to like um. So, uh, change with Tom Cruise at certain point. Yeah, well, Cruise wasn't I'm having none of that. Man. <laughs> you ain't taking Tom Cruise franchise, man. <laughs> now, he's like, nah, we're going to write this character off and I'm going to continue doing my thing. But yeah, yeah. definitely got to mention the Jason Bourne franchise. <clears throat> Perfect. I'm switching to Flick Stock now. Hello, hello, Trimology. So Jason Bourne, man, Jason Bourne, huh? I was. I didn't expect that choice actually. I was. I. I didn't. I, you know, it's been such a long time since I saw a lot of those movies. Plus, a lot of them had like multiple sequels and stuff. And yeah, the Jeremy Renner. Renner. I, I agree. He does get the short end of the stick sometimes. Um, so I can't wait. Uh, also, him being attached to that uh, Spawn project with with uh, uh, Jamie Fox has me really intrigued with that. So I hope I hope that works out because I think he is a good actor. He just needs a little more more spotlight sometimes. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I was yeah. like kind of weird because he left the Mission Impossible uh, project at the time to mm-hmm. go do Infinity War. In, that's a movie that he didn't appear, so people were like, "What happened there?" So it's unfortunate yeah. for Jeremy Renner to not like get his final chance at like stellar, stellar role. Yeah, well, I think he's I think he's in a better situation now with Marvel, so. Yeah. Definitely, you know. Um, well, jumping to my, jumping to another one of my picks is kind of different from what we've all been talking about action wise. Well, there's some there's a lot of action in it, but it's more comedy. Is the Rush Hour trilogy that we have so far? Now, this is one that a lot of people don't talk about because you know it's kind of goofy, but it goes back to that. This was kind of like almost not the birth of it, but you get a lot of the beginning stages of the buddy cop comedy where you have one cop that's extremely serious. They did a lot back in the 80s and stuff, like Turner and Hooch, and, like, uh, I forget, there's a couple of other ones that I grew up on, but I forget. But, um, you know, you get the, the, the funny cop, and then you always get the, the, the real serious one, and Jackie Chan being the serious. And you didn't, you didn't see a movie with the, with the African-American and a, and a Chinese guy, you know, at the time, you know, but, you know, buddy cop type of movie. And I thought it was cool the first one you got the introduction to them in L.A., Chris Tucker doesn't want to work with them at all whatsoever. He wants to be like in the forefront of the of the mission, and uh, and then the second one I think was in Chi- uh, China, I believe it was. They went overseas. I think it might have been in China, and they brought it back to to the states. And then the third one I think was in Paris. So I just like to see these adventures, you know, that they go on and the comedy along the way, and and the action and the different you know situations they get into. Plus, I think Jackie Chan's a phenomenal uh, martial artist. I grew up on him. Uh, a lot of martial arts I grew up on, you know, like uh, Bruce Lee, uh, Jackie Chan, Jet Li. Uh, um, you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme, a lot of those movies I grew up on from my dad and stuff like that. So they have a lot of nostalgic factor to me. But I thought those were extremely fun movies. Even though they weren't 100% the greatest movies, it was fun to throw on, you know, with your friends and watch them. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And uh, I remember reading that um, Jackie Chan made like $40 million for all the, the three films. So it means like I believe people it. actually saw it. So Yeah. Yeah, he, and, he, and he was still making, and, and before he even got introduced to the, in the States, like with Rumble in the Bronx and stuff like that, he was still making a, like a lot of movies in China and stuff like that. He was a huge star, and he was making a lot of money, so when he finally got introduced to America, he was already older, you know? So, And, and it was just cool that, that he could introduce the martial arts, like, uh, you know, we got The Raid, we got uh, Ip, Ip Man, we got uh, all these, you know, uh, martial artists that became big in America, like even with Kill Bill, like inspirations from you know that and stuff like that quentin tarantino watches a lot of Jack, old jackie chan movies so a lot of those inspirations from the far east they they were able to be adapted to, yeah. to directors or other actors in the states so i thought it was really cool no definitely and uh, most of the actors right now are either british um they the american cinema industry has become worldwide in terms of mm-hmm. actors. like they're not just american actors they have been coming from all other around the world something Super, super interesting to see. 
Yeah. I'm gonna put it on my list. I'm gonna see what movie files thinks about it. Thank you so much. All right. Yep. Man, he stole another one of mine, man. Lee, Lee, I am a terrorist. I am a tourist fool. That's why I love Rush Hour, man, and Chris Tucker and uh, Jackie Chan. Hopefully, we get a fourth one one of these days. We'll see. I know they've been talking about it for many, many years, but it's a great call there, David. Um, so let's see, let's see. Um, you know what? This is a little unorthodox. Uh, this pick here, we we talked about it briefly. Uh, I'm going with Mission Possible four, five, and six. Uh, I do appreciate one and two, and I thought when J.J. Abrams came in and kind of switched it up and made it a little bit more action-heavy and kind of tying everything together and so what that they kind of turned the page. But, man, Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol, Rogue Nation, and then most recently Fallout. I mean, you can't get any better action than that. I mean, Tom Cruise, we talked about him brief a little bit. I don't care. Obviously, he has his whole personal life and that we might not all agree with. But one thing I'll always appreciate, I, I grew up a Tom Cruise fan. One thing I always appreciate about, appreciate about his work is he always gives it 1,000% when he does his own stunts, his own, you know, the action is just high octane. The man is almost pushing 60 years old. He gives it his all, man. And, and I'm so excited to see what they do with seven and eight. Him and Christopher McQuarrie have such great chemistry. And then seeing all the people that they're bringing into the new one with the villains and I love me some Mission Impossible, more so than the uh, uh, James Bond franchise. I talked about Jason Bourne earlier, but Ethan Hunt and his crew, untouchable, man. Mission Impossible 4, 5, and 6, hands down some of the best action uh, movies you'll ever see. No, if we look back at the time, after Mission Impossible 3, like the series didn't know, have, know where to go from there. And it was Tom Cruise that, hey, I'm going to like, and then they go to Dubai and <laughs> do crazy stuff in the building and fallout he has such a different vibe from all the other ones yeah, it was incredible like and i mean you I got henry the cavill with the with the with the i mean come on man fallout yeah, is no, crazy the bathroom scene was especially when this the the punching effects were like insanely accurate crazy man crazy yeah i, I, I can't wait to see what mr cruz and, and mccrory have for seven and eight man <clears throat> And talking about, you mentioned um, untouchable characters now, and you also mentioned about um, these older characters uh, coming to action films. We, yeah. we cannot leave. I know it's not a trilogy, but I'm going to mention The Equalizer with Denzel. Martin. Yeah, man. Oh, for sure. For sure. Those type of characters, so satisfied to watch how they do things so elegantly, so disciplined. It's definitely one of my favorite um, movies right now. No doubt, man. I mean, it's uh, the age ain't nothing but a number. I mean, as you just said, Denzel, Liam Neeson, uh, you know, and all those guys. And, and, and like uh, uh, David said earlier, you know, not that she's super old, but I mean, you know, Charlie Theron, you know, she's still kicking ass. And, and, and obviously she's paying homage to a lot of the female characters I grew up with as a kid with Sarah Connor and Sigourney Weaver uh, with the Alien franchise. So, yeah, man, the age ain't nothing but a number, man. Tom Cruise is showing that now that he can do anything. These Mission Impossible franchises. Sure. <clears throat> Gonna go back to Flickstock. All right. Go back. Go back. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Mission Impossible, man. I mean, that's yeah. That that that's still something that's fresh in my mind. That ha that Henry Cavill scene that you guys were talking about. That was awesome. You know, the whole constant butting heads of that. But um, as far as my next pick, I don't want to take the good ones because I know Elliot. He's getting mad that I'm taking all the good ones. So I'll, I'll leave – I'll leave. Uh, I'll just say one of the Marvel ones for him. He probably knows what I'm talking about. Um, so I'll jump to one that might be or unorthodox for, for most because they don't really like the third one. But I'm going to say the Terminator franchise. And mainly because – I grew up on that, of course. I mean, they made multiple, multiple ones. They, you know, they had one that jumped way to the future with Salvation and stuff. Uh, but Terminator, the original, that was something. Now, I talked about this before. I have an uncle who owned a video store in the late 80s. So watching wow. Terminator on VHS was something like, we weren't supposed to be watching those movies. I was a little kid. That was rated R, you know. So 
that was more of a, a of almost like a horror movie because you had the cyborg aspect of it, but it was someone that was coming to kill you, right? It didn't have too much explanation, um, you know, uh, uh, of John Connor too much. I mean, you got a little bit explanation of what's going on, but it was Escape the Cyborg. That's all it was. And then in Terminator 2 in 1991, Jane, uh, they just amped it up so much, Cameron, and it, it like it was probably one of the best – a special effects movie I've ever seen at that time, and it's still in my like my top ten list of movies of all time. I could throw it on right now and still love it from beginning to end. The T one thousand in that, um, I totally forget the guy's name who plays it, the actor, but he's still menacing to this day. Like as far as like his face and stuff like that, yeah. he's a he's a stone cold killer. Now jumping to the third one that a lot of people don't like. I remember watching that one a lot a lot because I feel. They took what I wanted in a Terminator, and they amped it up even more. Now, the reason why I say that is because if you've seen this Terminator Dark Fate, the one that a lot of people didn't like that tied in, you know, supposedly yeah. the events, uh, that Rev-9 Terminator wasn't advanced enough for me. I mean, I feel like we've had this gap, right? So you should have they should have came up with a Terminator that was a little better than what they came up with. But I liked I liked that Terminator Dark Fate for what it was as a solo movie, but I didn't want it to tie into the to the lore at all, which it did though. Unfortunately, you know, I won't ruin it, but they did something at the beginning that I didn't really like, a lot of people didn't like. And um so jumping back to Terminator three, we got to see, you know, the first female Terminator and she had the, you know, the weaponized hands, you know, she was able to like, you know, shoot missiles out and all that. That's what I wanted to see. And it wasn't 100% executed that well. We got to see Arnold again, which is always awesome, you know, in those movies. And um, I liked it. I mean, I liked it better than Terminator Genesis, you know. So that's kind of saying that's kind of saying a lot. But um, yeah, I was gonna say the Terminator Terminator one through three are probably uh, a solid pick for me. No, definitely. And the actor you mentioned is Robert Patrick, if I'm not mistaken. Robert Pat. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely. No, and the the, the idea of having the good. Uh, the bad guy in the first film switching on to almost like a father figure in the second one it's like mm -hmm. one of the best tweets in the whole cinema history like yeah you mentioned something about having like a more advanced terminator i know mm -hmm. genesis is like a very controversial film and the john connor aspect of the terminator i really like the, the special that like nanotech uh, Terminator was actually kind of cool for me when I saw it. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not mistaken, like 16 at the time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that, that that was good. Terminator Genesis. I actually just picked it up on Blu-ray because I didn't have that. I didn't have that one because I was like, eh, I don't think I might rewatch it. But it was like at a. It was like for three bucks on Blu-ray, and I'm like, okay, I might want to rewatch it again. It had um, Amelia Amelia Clark as like young um, young. Uh, I'm trying to play young. Uh, what's the mom's name? <laughs> Uh, Sarah Connor. Connor, Sarah Connor. Yeah, I hate blanking with names. Sorry, um, no, but worry. yeah, yeah, I'll have to rewatch that one again because um, you. I, I, I'm gonna say this. I'm not a real big fan of Amelia Clark. Like as far as her acting goes, I w I've never watched Game of Thrones, and a lot of people were like, she's really good in that show. But as far as movies go, every movie I've seen her in, she's not that great in it. I don't know, like she's just kind of like a whatever actress to me. And uh, I remember seeing that, and I, I just wasn't too impressed. It just seemed like more of a reboot. You kind of got like a like a like a knockoff T1000 a little bit in that one. The, it was like an Asian uh, T1000, but you know, I mean, you know, it's it's okay for for what it was. It just was not as solid as the first couple, you know. No, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I get you. I, I I grew up watching those films. Like, they yeah. released before I was even born. So, I saw it, like, basically when I was tiny so I it, it's crazy it, it, and it, it, it's crazy to see like uh malls back in the day because malls really aren't popping like that like it was back in like terminator 2 days yeah. you know <laughs> so a change of the times you know yeah. yeah switching back to movie files great choice <clears throat> Alrighty, so yes, they, David, thank you for not stealing probably uh, my favorite MCU trilogy. Well, not probably, it is my favorite MCU trilogy of the bunch. And that's Captain America, man. Like, that is my favorite Avenger. 
when it came to him versus Iron Man, I'm like, man, forget Iron Man, team cap all day. Uh, I mean, seriously, I think the first Avenger, Captain America, the first Avenger is such an underrated Marvel film in, the, in, in regards to phase one behind. I even put Captain, I mean, another hot takes again, I'm, I'm team Captain America. So I even have the first Captain America over the first Iron Man uh, and then below like the Avengers in regards to like rankings for the first phase. But you talk about trilogy and talk about films that just progressively got more serious, more integral uh, from, you know, the introduction of Captain America to Winter Soldier, which is still arguably my favorite like solo film in the MCU. No, you know, I just love Winter Soldier, the spy espionage aspect. I mean, you have Robert Redford in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, seriously. And I mentioned it earlier when I was talking about um, the Bourne franchise with the hand-to-hand combat. Name a better fight than Bucky, or as I say, Winter Soldier versus Captain America in that in the street when they saw each other for the first time. I love that scene. I watch that movie pretty often, like every other weekend or so. I find myself watching Winter Soldier. And then you take it to uh, Civil War. I know everyone brings it up. It's an Avengers 2.0 film, whatever the case may be. Sure, that's the case. But at the end of the day, it's still Cap's story. It's still his through line, his relationship with Bucky, his relationship with you know Peggy Carter and her, her death in that film. Such a great story, but then of course you can't you can't forget Civil War because it introduced Spider Man to the MCU. Obviously, Black Panther it set the stage for Civil for uh, Endgame and, and and Infinity Wars. So I mean, just a perfect trilogy in my eyes, and I love the way that they wrapped up Captain America's story and Endgame. And we'll see what happens with Falcon and Winter Soldier come the TV show and all that. But Captain America, man, that's America's ass right there. It's Captain America, no. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Definitely, uh, my favorite Marvel movie will always be Winter Soldier. It just have like so serious, like it's, it's set apart from that uh, comedy aspect of Marvel that we're yeah, man. And for me, that was the movie that defined what's what the MCU and the Captain America uh, hero is. Uh, chill went down <clears throat> that film. Yeah, everything happened like. And it's funny, man, that, that shirt you're wearing. I love Superman, man. But they, everyone's like, how can we make Superman relevant? Watch what they did with Captain America and how they were able to make him uh, a, a human character. You know, he had his flaws. He didn't want – he wasn't a Boy Scout. He didn't want to do with, uh, you know, with – you know, what Fury and everyone was doing in Winter Soldier, he wanted to, he, he has his morals, he stands by him, and, and I just love it, man, and also, I can't forget the Russo brothers, right, uh, what a fantastic combination, those two guys just brought something, like you said, you, you mentioned, man, they brought something new to the Marvel, they made it serious, they took it, it honestly, it's not even really a superhero movie, it, and not, no disrespect to the superhero genre, because obviously I'm a big superhero fan, but it's just such a Again, cerebral type of film, spy, espionage, thriller, conspiracy theory. I mean, it is just, I mean, again, the trilogy is fantastic. But again, yeah. when you look at that Winter Soldier, man, that really changed the game for Marvel. And again, it, it destroyed S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, you know, Hydra and all that. I mean, a very pivotal fan, film. And like I said, Civil War just wrapped it up perfectly. And uh, Captain America, man, that's my guy. Yeah. That right. is my guy. Uh, I went, actually went to see that movie in theaters. I remember um, when they introduced the Winter Soldier in that scene where Nick Fury is driving, it was just like the whole theater was... Terminator. You was talking about Terminator. Dave was talking about Terminator. That's literally a Terminator scene. The, the score, the soundtrack. Ugh. I'm about to watch. Man, I'm gonna watch Winter Soldier when I'm done with this, man. Like I love. You do it I might join you. So <laughs> for sure, for it. sure, man. Definitely. I'm gonna go back. <laughs> yeah, I knew I'd get Elliot pumped up i knew i'd get him pumped up to watch all that <laughs> that's funny yeah no captain america is, is is definitely one of my fa favorites even though iron man will always be my favorite he was the first to do it uh those movies themselves just kind of went downhill uh iron man 2 was okay we did a watch along for that a while back iron man 3 um was just not hitting the mark for me but as far as my second up you know captain america is forever you know it was a perfect casting for him uh the movies themselves were just so solid and civil war jesus christ was like the icing on the cake as far as you know we got to see so many characters it was like our introduction of what was to come from avengers infinity war and endgame right and it just it just kind of set off this boom of marvel and, and i think it it that one, especially the third one, uh, just brought so many more fans into the into the mix. But jumping to my next pick, and it's a it's kind of a it's a comedy, 
But uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of this. It's called the Cornetta Carnetto Trilogy, and it's the movies of Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and Till the World's End. So most of you guys have seen Shaun of the Dead, a zombie comedy movie with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. I'm sure you've seen that one, right? Yes, I have. It's sure. the only one because you're going to have to talk to me about the trilogy you mentioned because, honestly, I have not seen it yet. Yeah. So, so oh, at man. first... Yeah, at first, I didn't even know this was a trilogy, but I guess since all, since the same actors of Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, they're friends and stuff, they I know they made movies after this, but I guess they all connect into one trilogy. Now, the first one, Shaun of the Dead, is they're just best friends and stuff like that, and they go out to you know a local pub, their favorite local pub in, in England, and it just gets hit with a zombie attack, you know, and, it, and it's kind of them just trying to take shelter. It's an extremely funny movie. It's very, very simple. It's just them trying to get from point A to point B. He's trying to save his girlfriend and his family and stuff like that. But it's funny along the way. And the practical effects in the zombies were great. So the next one after that was called Hot Fuzz, where the same guys, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, and they're two cops. But they're, they're cops that really, like, there's not much going on from what I remember in their town. And then these murders start happening, and they really want to be, like, the top, you know, like the really top of the game and stuff like that. So it's called Hot Fuzz, and that one's an extremely funny one as well. Uh, a lot of action as well. And the third one is called Till the World's End. And that one was probably one that a lot of people kind of forgot about. It got lost in the mix. I remember seeing that one in theaters. And you kind of got to be a hardcore fan of these guys to even really get it or understand it. But that one's just a bunch of friends that meet up and they go on a pub crawl. You know, just go from bar to bar, just jumping from bar to bar. But they find out, and I'm not going to spoil it, but they find out there's a twist going on in the town with some people. And they're not really what they see, what they seem. It's like it has like a little sci-fi twist on it. So I really enjoyed that for what it was. I hope these guys keep making movies. Um, I think Simon Pegg's in some new movie that just came out that they said um, is like extremely, extremely good. I, I I forget the name of it, but it just came out on VOD or something. Uh, uh, see, but I, I think he's, Pegg he's ex um, inheritance. If I'm not mistaken, if you're talking it, about that. yeah, inher that's what it is. Inheritance. Have you seen that one? Yeah, I made a review. I think it was last week around when it came out. Oh, that's I right. I actually liked the film. Someone uh, messaged me that he had, like, opposite feelings, which I'm okay. I get it. But honestly, uh -huh. after being so long without, like, new movies like that coming up, I actually enjoyed the film. Okay, I'll have to I'll have to check that one out. Because I think I did see it on your page, and I'm like, I got to check this one out when I get a chance. So. Oh, I, yeah, I put my pen down. I, I needed to hear it. I, I'll put that trilogy on my list and definitely give it a watch. Check it out. It's fun. It's a good. It's a good drinking movie. So you can't be completely sober when you're watching it. But yeah, give it a give it a watch if you can. It's really fun. Appreciate it. I'm gonna yeah. switch back to movie files now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. it was something last minute. But I got it done. See if it goes through now. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, that's a good pick. I, I've never seen any of the, uh, the those films, so I definitely have to check those out. By um, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of the director, and so I'm excited to see what his last, what is the last trip to Soho, um, and, and Baby Driver with some good ones. So, as far as my next uh, trilogy, I got to go with uh, the, the the man, the myth, the legend, Caesar, in the uh, Planet of the Apes franchise. Man, I mean, you talk about. It's one of the rare cases where you have a such a good opening film with Ruben Wyatt, Wyatt, I believe, was the director of the first one, and, and James Franco and everyone there. And then you're like, oh, they're bringing in a new director, Matt Reeves, who I love because I'm a big Cloverfield fan, and uh, let the right ones in. I'm like, okay, I like Matt Reeves, but let's see if he can really do anything. And I, and I still think to date that the second, the dawn of the apes, Planet of the Apes, is my, my favorite in that franchise. So, And then obviously, without spoiling anything, the third one, 
ends on a pretty tragic note, but uh, definitely left the door open for, uh, as we know, um, the director of the Maze Runner franchises. Um, I can't remember his name right now, but he's going to be directing the uh, the next set of films or trilogy in the Planet of the Apes franchise for Fox and Disney. So, but yeah, man, Andy Serkis and, and Kuba uh, with uh, uh, Kobe, Toby Kebbell and, and all those, the apes, I mean, the fact that they were able to make us care about the CGI motion capture uh, apes was just incredible, which, again, I talked about earlier with Matt Reeves and Batman. This makes me so excited for what he's going to do with Batman because he does such a great job with characters. Uh, but, yeah, man, a modern-day classics, you know, all those films to me and in regards to the Planet of the Apes. But that second one, that Dawn of the, of the Apes was fantastic and definitely one of my favorite franchises and favorite trilogies of all time is the uh, Planet of the Apes. No, definitely, I you talk about the first movie, the first one that first and Caesar speaks for this thing. I remember that thing. No! Was yeah, definitely yeah. was breathtaking. And the circus man, him with the CGI characters like King Kong, Gollum, um, Caesar, even Snoke in Star Wars. I know Snoke, yeah. Yeah. that's like live really bad. It didn't reach its potential, but yeah. Just Andy Serkis as an actor is an incredible actor. He's amazing. No doubt. And seeing yeah. Matt Reeves, especially in that last film, um, it was War, War for the Planet. War the apes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, War, that spy aspect when the the apes are trying to get inside the military base, I see that that, that aspect in the Batman universe. So it's definitely oh, yeah. a very strong point Matt Reeves has. And now that Disney bought um, Fox, and we see what happens with that. I just hope they keep that dark vibe on it. And yeah. they don't switch and make it more Disney because for me, it will ruin what, what they accomplished with this series. Yeah, I think the, uh, let me look them up right quick. Um, I actually, and I was talking about it in the chat with, uh, with someone with the Maze Runner franchise, but the director, uh, what's, my, what's the guy's name? Uh, let me pull it up here. West Ball. West Ball is his name. I think he did a really good job with their franchise. And I know he was supposed to have the the mouse, whatever that franchise that he got kind of pulled out uh, from Disney. But I, I have faith in West Ball. I think he's going to do a good job with this franchise. But again, he has a, a lot of uh, big shoes to fill with that, what Matt Reeves and everyone did with that original trilogy. So we'll see what happens this time around. But yeah, I love that Planet of the Apes franchise, man. Definitely. Want to throw something quick? For me, one of the most mm -hmm. unexpected trilogies ever is the Unbreakable Split and Glass trilogy. For me, going that's back a great to, call, man. That going back to the two, early two thousands with Unbreakable and Bruce Willis on the roll, and then take the project fifteen years later and do what he did with the with that movie. It's just mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, man, and I'm one of the few people that I, I actually enjoy Glass. I was yeah, I was slightly disappointed because I thought Split was just so fantastic, and like you just mentioned, the whole keeping everyone under the wraps that they never knew that it was a sequel to Unbreakable. But uh, I still like Glass, and, and that's a great call. That's a really underrated franchise in a trilogy. Even though like I, said, I know a lot of people weren't happy with Glass, but I think that it it ended pretty uh, good arc for all the characters within that franchise for sure. Appreciate. It. I'm switching back. That's funny, man. We were just talking about glass and like a little the live long uh, live watch along ah uh, live watch along. I'm so used to them. The live that I was doing on Instagram uh, about like an hour ago, uh, we had someone brought that up, and and I just I can't get on board with glass, man. It was something that we saw in theaters, and um, it, like I said, the first like two thirds of the movie was exceptional. The way it ended off with these addition I won't get into spoilers, but these additional characters that were kind of playing the background, you know what I mean? Like these Illuminati characters. Um, I was not feeling that aspect of it. And yeah. I and I, I I didn't like how they did my oh. man uh you know, I didn't like how they did how they did uh some of the main characters, I'll just say that. And um yeah, it just it didn't eat, end off on a sweet note, especially when you have such such amazing first two movies right unbreakable and, and split that split was fantastic like elliot said it was one of my favorites of that year uh, as well as like my introduction to anya taylor joy I'd, I'd never seen her before then and um you know she's in so many things now or so many things coming up but yeah uh jumping to it jumping to my next one i only have a few left but uh 
uh, a solid Keanu one is Matrix. It has to be Matrix, man. We didn't really touch on it. But uh, The Matrix was will forever be one of my favorite films, the first one uh, of all time, just for the fact that it was so advanced for its time, right? You didn't get too many people talking about material like that. I mean, and it's funny because a few years prior, he had, what, Johnny Mnemonic? That was, like, such a bad movie. Like, a lot of people didn't even like that from the 90s, you know? And they just thought it was such a weird, bizarre movie. But uh, with The Matrix, you got the whole origin story and you have Morpheus with Lawrence Fishburne and so these are great like great overall characters you had the character that wanted to betray you know you know his own uh friends and stuff so you had so much emotions going on and then the second one uh was just pretty much Neo amped up right he was like you know just he was on 11 and he was just you know utilizing all his powers and stuff he was able to dodge agents multiple agents and stuff like that and then the third one came along, and people were like, okay, this is different. <laughs> you know, it was kind of like the takeover of the Sentinels, finally. But something happens to Neo, and he's not fully capable. You know, I won't get into it, but we got to see Neo a little different. And, um, you know, and then now we're getting Matrix 4. So I, it's like, it's one of those things where I, that, that's, a, that's a franchise that I could see keep going because the, it, the story is so interesting to me. I will watch it forever, you know, because it's very relatable to what's kind of going on today. I mean, The Matrix is something that we're living right now until we get unplugged, right, until we turn it off. So it's just, it's just very interesting subject material, and I think all the cast uh, involved, even with, like, Jada Pinkett and stuff like that, uh, or like, uh, you know, some of the smaller side characters and stuff like that of the, uh, the ones that were like, um, running the vessels or the mechs and stuff like that. It, they were just, they were just all interesting characters to me. Even the ones that like got killed off right away in the first movie and stuff like that. I really enjoyed the characters for what they were in it. And it just was like, I, I felt like this is what future was going to be watching it like in 1999, right? It's like, this is what we thought the future was going to be like. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed it for what it was. No, uh, the, I remember. Um, I'll mention two two quick points about the Matrix. Um, weaving Hugo, Hugo Be Weaving makes sense. Down the um, villain in the film, let's say like that. Um, he he can he, his chemistry with um Keanu Reeves as the villain, the good guy. It's just amazing. Yeah, and a lot of people knock that 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 third movie where they're fighting in the sky and stuff like that. I thought it was that was really really cool, and it was it was something that was hard to do. They were doing a lot of te uh, the Wachowskis were doing a lot of techniques that were that a lot of people were not doing. It was like a uh, you know very innovative, almost like when we when we first saw what was happening with Tenet, you know, from Christopher Nolan. People yeah. were like, "How is this happening?" You know, the bending of time, but that you know the, people have been doing like quick tactics like that's what i want to see directors doing more of like tech camera tr tricks or different techniques that that blow our mind we need to be we need to have our mind blown again you know what i mean definitely and the other aspect i want to discuss about the matrix is that free will aspect of the movie that that plays with people's beliefs like it gets personal to some people if you believe yeah. in free will it's there is something predetermined whatever you believe the matrix is an excellent film to watch Mm -hmm. Yeah, had a, had a lot of deep uh, deep undertones with it, as, as well as like the the you know they had the key maker, you had the uh, the Merovingian, you had all these characters, you know, um, you know the architect. You had there was so many characters. I gotta rewatch that uh, trilogy again, but yeah, there it, it was just so many unique characters, as well as like those villains, you know, the the I forget what they're called, but in the second one, the duo of the. Um, the guys that were kind of like ghosts, they could just like disappear and stuff like that. Yeah. Those, a very, very cool, a cool balance of like interesting, you know, story making with viruses and like, it, it, you're essentially in a computer is what you're in. So it's like so much can happen. You can bend time and stuff. It's crazy. I loved it. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's talk quick question. Um, we yep. have each, um, when we switch back now to edit from movie files, each will have discussed, uh, I think, six, if I'm seeing my list right, six more, six trilogies each. If you want to continue, let me know or not. I won't, don't want to take more time than I have asked. I asked for 30 to 45 minutes. I don't know. It's up to you. You're my guest. Whatever you want. That that was, The Matrix was actually my last my last pick right there. So we could, we, yeah, we could edit yeah, on I, that if you want. All right. I'll go back and then we will we'll wrap up soon. Okay, perfect.
Welcome, welcome, welcome. All righty. So, yeah, The Matrix, that's a good one. Uh, not a fan of The Matrix Reloaded or Revolutions, but uh, hopefully The Matrix 4 uh, will redeem those two films. But uh, I guess wrapping up my list, uh, again, kind of an unorthodox kind of method here, very similar to my Mission Impossible uh, 4, 5, and 6. I'll go with The Avengers. The Avengers, not that I hate on Age of Ultron, but I got to go Avengers 1, uh, 3, and 4 in regards to uh, Infinity War and Endgame. I mean, seriously, how were they able to not only continue the Avenger storyline when, when they all are teamed up, but then also taking the individual Iron Man movies, Cap movies, Thor movies, spinning into the Scarlet Witch and Hawkeye and, and, and Hulk and, and, and still paying attention to their individual stories and then spawning off of that for they can connect to their individual stories. I mean, it's, it's stuff that obviously studios are trying to do it. Universal Monsters, you know, we obviously know what the DC has been trying to do, and there's so many different studios that's trying to do what Marvel is doing in regards to this interconnected universe where you can spawn off franchises, spinoffs, and then have these world-ending Avengers team up to fight, you know, uh, Loki and uh, Ultron and obviously Thanos. So, like I said, man, the Avengers is something that I don't think we'll ever see this again in regards to the buildup, the connective tissue, and then obviously just – being the, the trendsetter. Uh, and again, like I said, no disrespect to Age of Ultron, because I actually like Age of Ultron, but when you compare it to those three behemoth of films with Avengers and in, uh, Infinity War and Endgame, those, those are some great films. So like I said, I know it's not like necessarily one, two, three, but I, I got to bunch those three because they're just so interconnected. There's so much tie-ins too from, uh, obviously with Age of Ultron again, but from the first Avengers and Infinity War and Endgame, they're so interconnected to each other. So... I got to go with that as my last one. And, of course, like I said, I didn't want to leave out the, the classics. It's, of course, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, and Back to the Future. But those are just some ones that, uh, that yeah, I want to mention tonight. No, definitely. Yeah. And seeing um, HF Ultra at the time was very controversial. But I feel like mm -hmm. eventually it became very, like, important to the – with all the – because in Age of Ultra, it's the first time you see, like, Scarlet Witch and Iron Man's vision where yeah. – um, all the Avengers are de dead, and uh, exactly. like America still is cut in half. So, mm -hmm. and it's something like, that Marvel always does, time. man. I mean, we saw with Endgame. There's some, you know, they brought back Thor two in the Dark World, and that kind of played a pivotal part in Endgame. So, who knows? You know, Age of Ultron. There might still be Easter eggs that we might see Ultron back in one of the f future films, or. You know, he makes an appearance in Captain uh, and Winter so Falcon and Winter Soldier TV show. I mean, there's Marvel's just so smart. They just don't, you know, leave things in the past. So who knows? They might be able to uh, get some things out of Age of Ultron that we uh, might have never thought about. Uh, definitely, Kevin Feige, to set all those films for 10 years, you have to have, like, super vision of what, yeah, where man. you want to go to, like, plan every single little detail and get that dream a reality. Exactly, man. Exactly. I mean, you mentioned another character. Vision, Vision was introduced in Age of Ultron. So, I mean, again, they're all just, it's so great, man. But again, like I said, my, the first Avengers, the third one, the fourth one are just really some high tier comic book movies, really high tier movies. And again, everything that they kind of did with connecting everything, it's just incredible. And I can't wait to see what the next Avengers film has. And, and the lineup, of course, who's going to be our main players for the next Avengers team up film. So, yeah. Looking forward for the Marvel future, definitely. Yes, sir. And now with all this, for me, Spider-Man from Far From Home was uh, like it set up the bar high for the next film in the series. Oh, yeah. That yeah. mysterious sequence, that second fight they have in the building mm -hmm. with all the mm -hmm. illusions, that was like when I saw it awesome. in theaters, it was mind blowing. I don't yeah. know. I don't, you probably have seen the memes of um, what if um, Mysterio had the the reality stone what he could do with it, because all he had was illusion tape, basically. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, hey, you know, going back to Marvel Television, man, There's the, they have that what-if series, so they, they have the, the... It's just so crazy what Marvel's able to do, man, that they a lot of people can't replicate, so yeah. Uh, Elio, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for accepting my invitation. Yeah, Thanks man. a lot. Appreciate it. Um, if you're going to do that live of Winter Soldier, whenever, let me know. I'll definitely join yeah.
For sure, man. Uh, thank you for having me on tonight, man. I love talking movies and uh, interacting with some awesome people like you and David. Uh, and yeah, guys, uh, definitely make sure to keep an eye out for some stuff we got coming up, not only on Instagram, but of course, on my YouTube channel with reviews. Um, you know, we got a lot of big releases coming out tomorrow with the King of Staten Island, uh, the Five Bloods and Artemis Fowl. And uh, I do have a watch along this Saturday for a horror film for Hereditary. So definitely check me out there. But again, man, I appreciate you having me on and hopefully we can do some more collaborations in the future, man. Oh, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna yes, switch sir. back to for David to have his final words, and that's a wrap. Thank you so much. No problem, man. Let's see. All right. Sorry about that. Yeah. So. I think we got to disqualify uh, Elliot on that one, man. I don't know if he could jump from one to three to four. I didn't know those were the rules. Come on, man. You could do that with anything. <laughs> but that's okay. We'll give him a pass on this one. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you for having me, man. I mean, I love talking movies. Uh, whatever it is, I would love to get involved, whether it's here, Zoom, face, uh, you know, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, whatever it is. And, um, yeah, I had, I had a really good time. Um, I, th there was a lot that I was looking up on the list earlier and stuff. It's just that the movies weren't as solid as far as, like, they had rewatch value or I felt like the third one fell off. It's always, like, the third one that's the hardest, yeah. right? Yeah. So I feel like it's, that, it's, that even if the, the, the first one, then there's the sequel that tends to be the defining point. If it's better than the first one, then it says the more yeah. for the third one or either – doesn't work and the third one is even worse so and 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 going back to what you were saying uh with elliot right now about um far from home that was a movie that i thought was better than homecoming as far as because we you get you get the introduction of of uh of mysterio right and um just having jake gyllenhaal into the mcu is like like I, my head just blew up and 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 you know we, we're, we're even seeing you know with morbius it's still kind of a tie-in with sony and stuff like that but just having all these guys like attached it, it just makes me like i'm a huge Mar i know you have a superman shirt on but i, I you know sweater on but i'm a huge I'm marvel I'm fan just, <laughs> yeah no, i haven't I'm seen it's really close to be my favorite superhero yes i really like that for me made part from all different was that we will get to see in this third film what happens after his identity is revealed? That's something that exactly. hasn't happened before. And that's and that's exciting. See, when they leave it off on a cliffhanger like that, I'm like, take your time. I will wait to watch the third one. You know, it was it was perfect, and it's it's a. Uh, He's he's definitely my favorite one. Even though I grew up on Tobey Maguire, obviously, I think by default people always say Toby because we grew up on him. Most of us that are older, we grew up on him, right? So, um, you know, and that's not to dis uh, you know discredit the Amazing Spider-Man too. Um, and that's funny. I just picked it up at the Dollar Tree. The Amazing Spider-Man two, the one with Electro. <laughs> recently, I, I like that character, that that villain, so much. But um, yeah, so. I mean, I can't wait to see what they do with this with this third one, and and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, the future of movies is is really good. They're always, you know. But going back to what to what we were talking about, the Matrix, I just want to see some more, and even Tenet, I want them to twist it up a bit. You know, get like Inception vibes. You know, I mean, another Nolan, but you know, let's see if we can get some more directors that are that are setting the high bar, changing the game, and I don't want to see a bunch of cookie cutter movies. You know, especially since. 2020 is gone. Half of it is gone already. And if we're lucky, we might see Tenet next month. I don't know what your feelings are on that, but um, I know a lot of people are probably not going to the theater next month. They're going to be waiting still, you know, so. I'm, I'm, I have Tenet as one, one of my most anticipating films for this year. It's up there with yeah. along with Dune and The Bellroom and even A Quiet yeah. Place Part 2, which will get in the sequel to the first one that was yes. pretty amazing. And seeing Christopher yeah. Nolan's work with Memento, um, The Prestige, I love the magic aspect of that film. And having him with Inception, even Interstellar, which is an unbelievable like, sci-fi film. I feel like yeah. really, really uh, tenant anticipated. Yeah, Tenet and um, A Quiet Place 2 were, were my most anticipated as, as well. Um, I really wanted to see what they were going to do with Wonder Woman 84 as well because uh, I heard so many good things 
ab about it. I, I actually was talking to someone at a Hollywood premiere right before they shut down everything and back in March, and uh, and he had seen a screener copy like a year ahead. He went to a special screening yes. before before everything was done, and he said, this is better than the first, and they're really explaining a lot. Of, it got really comic booky. he said. It, it yeah. follows the comic book a lot. So I'm actually really interested in that character, and, and I don't watch too many DC movies, but that was a character that I really um, grew to like. I really like the Wonder Woman. Definitely. Yeah, so. uh, I see we have like 15 seconds left. Um, David yeah. and Elliot, thank you so much, both of you, for ha uh, for accepting my invitation. For everyone that, see, that saw this live, thank you so much for the support. And I'll see you soon, hopefully. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Yeah, for sure, man.